artists paint responsibly. Millions and millions of paintings are being affected. You're an adult. Think before you paint. Don't play with mud. Greetings, minders. Glad to have you watching. Today we're going to talk about muddy colors, okay? This has been a frequently asked question, and it's just one of those things that I needed to think about for a while, how I'm going to present it, how I'm going to talk about it. We're going to get into defining some terms and then uh, show you, you know, some ways to avoid it, no matter how you define the term. So, you like to play with mud. Well, since when do you play with mud? Ever since you were dug up? How many times do I have to tell you? You're plastic. All right, so there are two definitions, I would say, two different definitions that most people think of when they think of muddy colors. And I don't think either definition is right or wrong necessarily. Um, mud, just to give you a little background, muddy colors is kind of a term that was coined with oil painters. Oil paint is pretty much opaque, and so you get these big globs, and when you had a mixture that was muddy, it looked like a big glob of mud. When you're dealing with a transparent medium like watercolor, um, it's a little different, and that term has kind of crept in uh, for watercolor, and I think it means one of two things. So the first definition is what I would call compromised intensity. That's an unexpected low intensity of the color you intend to paint. So you're wanting to get a nice, beautiful, intense, you know, sort of emerald green. In a lot of cases that would be a, maybe a thalo, like a thalo green, okay? And I paint that and I'm thinking, okay, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. That's intense. And let's say I went over here and um, or, and mixed where there was some red brown or some red. And I wasn't paying attention. Or there are a lot of colors on your palette. And now you're thinking, that's not the color I wanted. That's that's like dull. That's like a, that's a muddier version of the green. Let's deal with that. And uh, I think that's a common definition. And instead of calling it muddy colors, let's just call it uh, compromised intensity, contamination in other words. And I've had some questions about this, how to keep colors from being contaminated. So the first one you to deal with is a dirty palette. Um, just be careful. I mean, I use, a lot of artists will actually use the mixes that are out on your palette. Um, un unless they just don't see at all what it is they're, they're wanting to paint with. But how do you keep your colors from getting contaminated? Um, well, the first simple thing is you just clean your palette. Okay, that's a big duh, right? If I'm wanting to start fresh with very vibrant colors, just wet that area and clean it. Okay, the other thing is, uh, and this is probably more common. I, I think most people can figure that out. You know, if, if you want a clean area to mix, you got to clean it. The other that is more common is that these pans or wherever you've got your paint have been dirtied up and you can't necessarily tell. So, so once I clean this area, I do, and I go through this, especially when I need a pure color, I do what I call proofing my palette. So I'm going to need, let's say I'm going to need uh, these reds and purples and I need them to be fairly pure. So all I do is I just wet them and Clean my brush, and they're pretty good. They're not all that contaminated, okay? If they are, um, just, just a few brushes across the top with a wet brush usually will clean off any contamination that you have on top. So it's not a big deal. So that's the second thing. Clean your area. Make sure there's no colors that are going to mix in. Uh, proof your colors by cleaning off any contamination, especially on dark colors where you can't see what you've got. And proof your palette. Now, here's uh, another way that colors get contaminated and your intensity gets compromised. 
And that's painting with a complement. And a complement can be um, residue left in your brush. It can be residue left on your palette. We've already talked about cleaning your palette. But it could also be you're coming along. Maybe you're doing a sky, you know. And it's graduating from purple to a golden yellow. Well, those are complements. And pretty soon in here, you have a kind of a dull, muddy yellow. I just call it compromised intensity. So be careful with applying wet in wet colors that are complements that are going to mix and bleed. A lot of times when you're doing wet and wet, you've got to have a strategy. Got to have a strategy that says, I don't mind it if it bleeds. Uh, I'm going to let it dry first because I don't want it to bleed. Uh, what color am I using over what color? Now, I don't necessarily refer to some of these dull colors as mud as much as just neutrals that are out of place. Um, a lot of times the, the neutrals that you can get from mixing complements, and by the way, if you haven't seen my, my complement mixing video, uh, up here I'll, sh I'll have a card that should flash out. There it is. And then down in the description, uh, I'll also put a link to that video. Uh, so I'm not going to deal with mixing complements here, but uh, you can mix some really beautiful neutrals. So having neutrals um, is not necessarily mud unless it's out of place. It, it, and, you know, it's a, it's a dull gray color where you're looking for intensity. So don't be afraid, when appropriate, don't be afraid to mix neutrals. And you can mix beautiful neutrals. The key, and we'll get to this more in detail when I get to my second definition of muddy colors, the key is luminosity. But we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, the other thing is, and it's in the same vein as wet and wet, but, and it's also just another version of, uh, a dirty palette is just too many colors. You just got too many colors going on. And oh, I, I want some red there and I want some orange over here and I want some green down here. This green is being infected now by the orange and the red and it's looking muddy. All right. So that's another reason. That's a, a third reason. It's just too many colors. So watch. Um, be careful about how many colors you're employing at once, how many colors are out on your palette. A lot of times I, when I clean a mixing area, then I will mix just a few analogous colors at a time, or I'll keep them separate in mixing areas. Uh, and also, likewise, I watch, you know, what I'm doing with the wet and wet and how many colors there are. You know, be patient and see, we're creating some some mud right there. And, and finally, um, in compromised intensity category, I would say overworking produces mud. And that's just painting over the same area too many times and too many different tries to get it right. You know, you're never going to, and this is pretty much a beginner problem. A lot of beginners forget to consider watercolor a transparent medium. And so they say, uh, I don't want that green. I want red. Oh, that red is is dulling that green, and yet I can still see them both. And so, oh, now what do I do? I'll paint it more, you know, like you would with oil paint. I'll use more. Well, that's not going to work, you know. Or, I man, I need it more vibrant. And it just gets darker and darker. And um, maybe after that dries, they go back and they try again. Maybe they they lift they say well if i just lift some of this um maybe if i try this and it's like oh rats you know it's like this isn't working and and they go anyway that actually <laughs> looks pretty colorful but you get the point overworking will produce mud sometimes to review compromised intensity um if you need pure colors, make sure you clean your palette area. Make sure you brush off your pure colors and proof your palette. 
Make sure you don't mix in complements where you want those pure intense colors. Make sure you watch where your wet and wet is uh, and what bleeds wet and wet because that can produce mud. And make sure you don't overwork an area. One last thing, when you're shading, this is a common mistake. If you're planting a flower and you have this nice intense quinacridone red here, uh, shade with cooler analogous colors. So I want to shade, if I want to maintain intensity, then I go over here and I shade with an analogous cooler color, right? So here's uh, quinacridone magenta. That way I'm, I'm retaining all of that red intensity. Uh, maybe I even go to purple then. Doxazine the purple in the in the deepest shadow. Now all of that color has stayed nice and intense. Second definition of muddy colors I would describe as non-luminous browns and neutrals. Um, luminosity, I'll do a little visual aid for you here. Luminosity is a, is a function of transparency. So this is your paper. This is your paint. And this is light. The light comes through, bounces off, and reflects back through the paint. It's like backlighting. It's like stained glass. That's luminosity. Okay. Non-luminous colors are colors that are more opaque. Here's your paper again. Here's your paint. And the light is reflected off the paint. It has a flatter, duller look, and especially if you start getting into the neutral colors and the darker neutral colors, it can just look uh, lifeless. Now, personally, I think this is the true definition of muddy colors, but it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to help you problem solve in general. It doesn't matter how we define the terms. Uh, now, I'm going to have a hard time demonstrating here because I usually am very meticulous about choosing transparent color, so I don't have a lot of opaques. Color choices um, are going to make a big difference. Whatever paints you use, and preferably you're using artist grade because you're going to find the most information on artist, reputable artist grade paints. Uh, get to know the opacity of all your paints. That's important. Get a color chart. Uh, this is the M-gram color chart. Uh, actually, today I'm using Core. Uh, this is my Core palette because it's smaller and easier to get on camera. So I have a Core chart. Uh, look up the colors you have. I mark mine with an X. Get to know what their transparency. It's okay to use opaque colors. I'm, you don't have to be as fussy about picking transparent colors as I do. Um, I just do a lot of glazing, so I just like to have as many and most as transparent as, as I can. But as long as you're aware, you can deal with it. So here's the ones to watch out for. Uh, these are typical culprits. The cadmium reds. Um, in a lot of, a lot of brands, they're at least semi-opaque, and some brands are even almost opaque. They will muddy up quicker, especially when they come in contact with duller colors or complements. And by muddy here, in this definition, I'm talking about a flat, dull, lifeless, non-luminous color. Cadmium reds. I don't use cadmium reds. I use quinacridone reds. I use pyrrole reds and uh, colors like that, which are much more transparent. But cad reds are fine. I actually have some cad reds, I think, in my Sennelier palette. Um, but I don't do as much glazing with that. So another culprit. Venetian red. Venetian red muddies really, really badly, really quickly. Um, you just really have to watch it. It's a, it's actually a gorgeous, gorgeous color, but I don't have, I don't, I have some, but I don't use it. I just don't use it. If you thin it out and you're using it pure and you're not mixing it with any, with anything, uh, you're fine. Or if you're mixing it with a, a very transparent analog analogous color, like an orange or something. Uh, also watch uh, yellow ochre. A lot of artists don't use yellow ochre. A lot of them do. Uh, I used to love yellow ochre. I used it a lot. And I stopped using it because uh, it didn't glaze well. 
and it muddies easily for the same reason that Venetian red does. Depending on the brand, some yellow ochre is going to be more uh, opaque than others. Watch out for cerulean blue. That's a favorite color with skies. Um, it's like a perfect sky blue. But uh, if you get a little orange in there and you're going to have problems, um, just by itself, uh, it's not so bad. Um, just be careful if you use it within landscapes and you're mixing a lot of other colors uh, in with it, especially browns, you're going to end up with some mud. Uh, Naples yellow. Now, a lot of brands, that's absolutely opaque. It's kind of like Venetian red. And so it... Uh, unless you're putting down a single application uh, that's thinned out, you have to be careful. Watch out for raw umber. Actually, watch out for all browns. Now, uh, in M. Graham, a lot of their browns are more transparent. But in some brands, uh, browns, you know, like uh, burnt sienna, uh, burnt umber, raw umber have a, at least a semi-opaque factor to them. And raw umber, because it's so kind of neutral, is a big, big, big... I, I think this is probably one of the number one colors that people mix to get in their their stuff to get uh, mud. Especially if you're doing landscapes, you know, you're going along with your, your greens and your foreground grasses, and you throw some raw umber in there, and all of a sudden stuff turns to mud. So watch your raw umber. And last of all, last of all, black. But a lot of brands' blacks are opaque. And you shouldn't really be using black anyway. I can't think of a lot of reasons to use black. It's just, it's very flat, dull, and lifeless. And you mix the color with it, and that's what it's going to look like. So anyway, I hope that helps. That's just a primer on avoiding mud. Uh, just things to watch out for and be aware. That's all it is. It's just being aware um of either contaminating colors that you intend to be very bright or using more transparent colors that you hope will be more luminous thanks everyone love that you're watching appreciate it hope you'll subscribe and like this if this was a help to you patrons thank you so so much couldn't be doing this without you and i am not kidding when i say that and we will see everybody in the next video.